Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the High Bee Buzz. We're delighted to be joined by a chef who earned a Michelin star at the age of 29, a man who's got restaurants all over Edinburgh and who's got two sons in the Hibernian FC <laughs> Academy. Tom, thank you for joining us. No, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. That's okay. I thought it'd be prudent to start with your journey into becoming a chef. So obviously you grew up in, in Edinburgh, but when did you start to have the feeling that, you know what, I want to become a chef, I want to pursue this in my life? I think it's when my football, I knew that I wasn't going to become a footballer. That I was like, <laughs> oh no, I've got to try and do something good here. Yeah, but no, really it started um, washing the dishes in a local pub when I was 13 and I just fell in love with the adrenaline and the excitement of, um, of cooking and wanted out of school. And, you know, fortunately I found something that I really love and that's a really nice thing to have all the way through your life. You, your job doesn't feel like a job. What was, the, what was the first meal you cooked? Oh, I don't know what the first meal I was cooked, <laughs> yeah. but I remember, I remember defining moments like, um, yeah. you know, like uh, cooking f f whole fish for the first time, plucking pheasants, um, you know, jobs like that that just like shocked you as a young, as a young chef, you know. What, what was that like as a, as a young chef? Obviously, like you say, you, you left school, mm -hmm. you went straight into um, becoming a chef. Yeah. You had to start at the bottom. In yeah. chefing, it's quite a harsh world, isn't it, when you're a youngster? Yeah, a bit like football, you know, like um, so 20, 25 years ago, um, you know, being an apprentice is very much you start at the bottom, you mm. know, and you have to work and grind and you don't get paid much and you work many hours. And it was a proper old school, um, you know, apprenticeship. Um, and you had to fight for everything. You had to, just like football again, you know, you had to fight your way up the ladder, show that you were keen, have that glint in your eye, show, have the right attitude. And um, that's that. I think that's what pushed me on because um, you know I had that in my DNA to, to to be the first one in to help the chef with this. You know to to get all the pots and pans. You know to have that really can-do attitude, and that's what I try to get across to all young people, including my own children. Is that is so important that attitude. Where did that come from? That attitude must come from my parents. Um, I would. I'm sure it does. Yeah, they're both very hardworking and um, have that mentality and. Um, just that, you know, with cooking, again, like football, you're only as good as your last meal, mm. you know? So you can't, you know, relax on your laurels thinking, that's it, I've made it, I've had a great service, you know, because tomorrow's another day and you start again. Yeah, absolutely. And like you say, um, you had to start at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, you came in early. How important was it so early on in your career to, to kind of move away from home to have new experiences. Obviously went down to London as well yep. and you worked under Michelin star mm -hmm. chefs and restaurants at, yeah. at that point. How important was that? Vitally important. The first, the first thing as a young chef, I think it's really important that you get a good grounding, mm -hmm. but you, by working in the best possible establishments that I could work in, I met really good mentors. You know, people who took me under the wing, they pushed me hard, you know, they, they, they gave me the right grounding. Um, but then traveling was something that really influenced me as well. Going to London at a young age was incredibly demanding. It was hard. Um, and, and then going to Paris, you know, really stepping outside my comfort. Every time I was once told that whenever you get comfortable, you need to step outside your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, push yourself, you know, even if you have to go one step back to go too forward. And that's exactly what I did every time. Every time I got pushed back and went to Paris, didn't speak French, you know, but it shaped me as a person and as a chef, without a doubt. Yeah. Who, who gave you that advice for you to step out of your comfort zone? Just chefs that I worked for. Um, yeah. even, even my parents, um, they just pushed me. They pushed me all the time. Um, and that, again, you know, you're not, you're not born with this talent, just like football, that you, you know, you're just good, you're going to be an, a chef. You know, you have to graft. You have to put the hours in this. You know, it's a bit like football. I keep saying to the boys, left foot, left foot, left foot. You know, because, you know, you just, if you want it, you've just got to keep practicing. It's repetition all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And then that obviously helped you um, set up your own restaurant. Mm -hmm. But it, it wasn't all plain sailing, was it? No, it's certainly not plain sailing. I mean, it's, it's a complete roller coaster. Um, you know, like, you know, the map to success is not a straight arrow. It's, mm. it's a very, you know, up and down uh, roller coaster to success. And then there is no such thing as arriving at success. Every day you're, you're pushing, every day you're, uh, you're trying to be better, you're trying to evolve the team and, you know, grow. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, in the beginning when we opened the restaurant, it was myself, my wife, we had a 60 grand overdraft, we had all our savings, you know, young, raw people starting a business, had no idea, you know, it was a tiny wee place. 
and it's just grown naturally and organically over the years. People have been with us for years and years on the journey, and and um, and we just keep going, and and we still love it, which is the most important thing. Absolutely. Did you always have that ambition? Then I want to have my own restaurant. I think deep down I did, but there was never this ambition to come back to Edinburgh, open up lots of restaurants, uh, do that, because it just doesn't work like that life. Mm. You know, you've just got to take it step by step. You've got to evolve naturally and organically. And, uh, and what was really nice is we started humbly here in Leith. You know, this was um, this particular site was like the graveyard of restaurants, you know, because it was just one every year it was a different restaurant. You know? yep. and why should we be different? And you know, we're still here now, 15 years on, we're still in the same premises. The, it, the premises has changed dramatically, but we're still at the heartbeat of Leith. And I'm really proud of that. Yeah, I was gonna say, how important is it for you to be a real kind of heartbeat for Leith, for uh, Edinburgh, to have a restaurant that's been so successful? Absolutely, I mean, it's a really, it's a really proud thing that people from the city come here to, to support so many, employ so many people, to, to work with so many suppliers, the taxi drivers rely on us, the suppliers rely on us, you know, we are a very, very busy restaurant. And then one of the most humbling things is people flying in from all over the world mm. to come and eat in the restaurant. And that's amazing, you know, and um, that makes me really proud. Yeah, and you were just 29 when you um, received a, a Michelin star. Mm, well, yeah. What, what was that moment like for you? It was a bit surreal. Um, you know, we were, I didn't even know the Michelin Guide was coming out that day. It was crazy. Um, and it, it did, it changed everything, but people started coming and we were just this small, simple restaurant. But it allowed us to, to, you know, to really secure the business, to, to allow us to, to grow again. And, um, and it's been a journey, it's been a journey. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And like you say, the, the business then yeah. grew from there. How difficult was that for you when your heart is in the kitchen and your chef whites now, to step almost away from that as you created more restaurants, mm -hmm. the business group grow. Yeah. Um, how then did you manage that transition? I'm still trying to manage that transition, <laughs> but um, I'm still very much involved in the restaurant, um, especially the kitchen in Leith. I'm here pretty much every service. Um, this is the baby. This is the one, you know, the Michelin star restaurant where people come. And it's, it, it's, it's really important that I have a presence here. But then the great thing about Edinburgh is I can get around really good. But the, the, the other restaurants, there's, there's a whole philosophy, the people who have come through this restaurant and then have gone on. So it's, we're always about trying to give career opportunities for people to grow naturally and mm -hmm. in the business and to progress. And uh, it's, it seems to work, you know, it's been challenging in the last couple of years, but um, you know, we're still here. And I can imagine um, you've had to learn so much on the job as well, obviously like in terms of uh, management, building a team, suppliers, um, giving the right people um, those job opportunities and yeah. trusting people in other restaurants to, to help your name and your reputation and mm -hmm. um, to continue to blossom. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's, um, it's been an almighty journey, you know, but without people, you're nothing. If you don't have the right people, you, you, you cannot do anything in life, you know. So we wouldn't have got anywhere without the team that we've got and, um, and the relationships that we have. I mean, the, the amount of regulars that we have here in the restaurant and in all the, and, you know, in the, in the Scran and the Scally, is mind blowing. You know, people come in. in the Scran and Scally, we've got people that come two, three times a week. Mm -hmm. You know, here in this restaurant, we've got people that come every, you know, two, three times a month. It's phenomenal, you know, yeah. and um, so you, you, you never rest on your laurels. You, you've got to always make it exciting. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And how, how did you learn those skills then? Was that just on the job, picking things up from previous people that you'd worked for? Yeah, absolutely. Mentors are a massive influence on you. Um, my wife is, uh, and business partner is a massive influence on the, the restaurants. She's always trying to recreate the, the interiors to, 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 to make an experience that people feel really comfortable. You know, there's no point coming to a restaurant where you're, it's so stiff and formal. You know, you've got to come and relax and enjoy yourself. When, when you come to a good restaurant, you should enter the restaurant, you should leave all the troubles of the world at, at the door. Mm. And when you leave, you should float out. You know, it's, you've forgotten, you know, it's, it's a real theatre experience. Yeah. Similar to football in that aspect, mm -hmm. where the, the match day atmosphere and when you go to a game, it's the experience on a match day is Absolutely. massively important. How though. much did we miss that when we weren't allowed to go to the football? Mm. You know, because for me, it's the excitement or you're getting the train or going in the car, you know, get, getting your scar. You know, where do you go to eat? Where do you go for yeah. a pint? You know, that kind of thing. The atmosphere, seeing faces that you've not seen for, you know, all this time. 
that's what we miss. You know, yeah. your team score a last minute winner or, you know, there's a funny song. You know, that's, that's everything that we missed about life. Just like football, just like restaurants. This is the heart and soul of life. And that's it. There's so many transferable skills, isn't there? Whether that be um, through management and the changes in management, whether that be through the experience that people mm -hmm. get ultimately wanting to leave everyone with a smile on their face at the end of the day. Absolutely. And, you know, football restaurants are very similar because you get instant feedback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if someone doesn't like a meal, they're going to tell you, yeah. you know, because everyone's a critic. Yeah. You know, everyone's a, everyone's a restaurant critic now, whether it's social media, whether it's TripAdvisor, whether it's whatever. And it's just like the football, you know, if they don't like the way the team are playing or <laughs> the performance of the left back, they're going to tell them, yeah. you know, so it's a tough, you've got to have thick skin, you've got to be, um, you've got to learn the, the, the job, um, and then, uh, yeah, you just see where it takes you. Absolutely. But the wonderful thing is that you've always got a chance to reprieve it, you know, so yeah. if you've had a bad service, then you try to improve the next day, yeah. you know, it's a bit like losing a match. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. In my role covering Hibernian FC home and away, I'm constantly using my phone, tablet or laptop and I know the importance of staying safe online. That's why I use NordVPN. By using NordVPN, this protects my personal data and bank details from hackers and gives me peace of mind whilst traveling and working on the move. Thanks to our great partnership with NordVPN, you can grab your exclusive deal by going to nordvpn.com forward slash highbees or use the code highbees to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan an additional month for free, and a bonus gift. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. It would be remiss of me not to bring this up with you, but obviously nutrition in football. Yeah. Um, a light has been shone on that so much more recently. It's almost like, in terms of the media, people have actually started to see the massive impacts that it can have on the way the player performs. Mm -hmm. from, from your perspective, I guess, for you, that's a re relief that people are actually starting to to see that and pay more attention to it. Absolutely. Now. I mean, there is no doubts about it. I'm, I've been very lucky in my life. I've met some of my sporting icons. And the, the, the absolute obsession with eating correctly to get to the top of your game mm. is, is, is phenomenal. I mean, you have to take this seriously if you want to be a footballer. There's no two ways about it. Mm. If you want to be at the top of your game, you've got to live and breathe it 100%. So, you know, that's a choice. After that, it's up to the individual. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're only cheating yourself, you know? So that's, it's, it's a tough one. It's really tough, but it's a short career. And uh, again, it's down to choice and how much you want it. Yeah, because obviously you have to manage that as well. Obviously, two eldest sons are, <laughs> are in the, the Hibernian Academy. Yeah. Not obviously to the point where professionals have to kind of live and breathe yeah. and, and eat yeah. the right things 24-7. But equally, from your perspective, obviously, it's something you're really passionate about. Mm -hmm. You slowly have to kind of drip feed that in. Yeah, absolutely. And it's about not pushing it too much, mm. about dripping it in, like you say. But if you can get them into that mentality, and I think the Academy is doing a great job like that, and, and the fellow parents that I've met and the way that they do it. You know, as a parent, your job, when you, I think, is obviously nothing to do with the coaching and the, you know, the football side, just let them enjoy it, let them do that. But as a parent, you've got to be supportive, I think, and at the same time, just drop in, because if, if I force it too much, of mm. course, they're going to resent it, but the importance of trying to, you know, what you're going to eat before the match, going to bed at the right time and looking after yourself, and then afterwards as well. But again, you know, they're kids and <laughs> sometimes it's just like, no, <laughs> you got to, like anything, you got to get the right balance. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. What, what's the academy been like um, for, for you two lads? Yeah, no, it's been, a, it's been an incredible experience for the t my two lads, myself, my wife, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know, you, one week you can be, you're playing hearts, then you're away to Aberdeen and, um, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing wee experience, but, you know, we all know how difficult it is to become a, mm -hmm. a footballer or, or anyone at the top of your game. Um, but I've got to be—I've got to say the the whole team at the academy have been phenomenal, especially through a very challenging time of COVID. Yeah. Um, you know, in the heart of COVID, when we were all in isolation, you know, as a family, we're all doing all Steve's workouts and yeah. you know, like gym <laughs> stuff and all good this. Um, and then you know, just sending in videos of keepy uppies and all the different things that you know because yeah yeah these were the things that got us through lockdown um the club and and exactly the same as spartans who 
um, my other two boys play for. You know, these are the things that I remember from lockdown is these, <laughs> all these moments. But, but um, most importantly, they love it. Yeah. They love it. They, they really enjoy it. And um, they take it very seriously. But it's just an incredible life experience, you know. So I'm really yeah. proud of them. Yeah, and I guess over time you'll be um, drilling in almost those um, mottos or what helped you kind of succeed in terms of your but, grit, your work, yeah. work ethic. I think that's really interesting. And I think I've talked about that many times with, again, different footballers, sports stars, Chris, Sir Chris Hoy, my chef's in there. They are like, they're the next generation. Mm. So the, they are putting in the graph. They're putting in the dedication, just like a young footballer. Yeah. You know, so it is that, you know, you're not somehow born like you're just going to be this incredible football you have to work for it mm. it's exactly the same with the chefs if they want it we give them the platform after that it's up to them yeah absolutely and you you mentioned covid mm -hmm. um obviously that had a huge impact on the entire world um yeah. massively on hospitality Massive, restaurants yeah. suppliers how how did you get through that and you've done a lot of work with your suppliers as well haven't you to yeah. make sure that they've all been all right and got through covid yeah i mean covid was if we go right back to the beginning, just like football, I just couldn't comprehend what they were saying. Like, mm. we had to close our business. And then, you know, if you close our business and there's nothing coming in, a bit like having no fans coming yeah. in, it was a very, very challenging time. And um, I think, I, you know, without the support of the people in the business and, and uh, you know, people about you, my fellow directors, of getting through it, I. I uh, it was just crazy. I mm. couldn't comprehend how we were going to survive. Um, the furlough was massive, but then the furlough cost so much money as well, you know, yeah. as an employer. Um, and you had all your rent, your rates and everything. It was crazy. And then as you started to, you know, you know, come to terms with it, it was like, hold on a minute here. Like, if our hospitality businesses are not working, that means my wee fishmonger and the wee guy mm. who does this and the wee vegetable grower there and the wine supplier and the florist and the guys who clean the restaurants, they're not working. And yeah. then it was like the taxi drivers. And then it was like, and it was just like the restaurants were, you know, such a, at the top of the tree. And if they're not operating, there was so many underneath, mm. just like the football club. Yeah. You know, the, the knock on effect was so damaging um, and hugely frustrating as well. But we, <laughs> we won't get into that. Yeah, I got through it though. Um, and now yeah. obviously the restaurants uh, are back flourishing again. Yeah, restaurants are back. Um, you know, we really hope this this is behind us now, and people can really. We'll, we'll never. Even now, I get emotional when I go around the restaurant and I say hello to the customers, and I hear the noise and the atmosphere and the mm. clinking of glasses and people laughing. I'm like, you'll never take this for granted again. Yeah, absolutely. Just like, just like a last minute winner, you know, like you know, it's you, you'll never take it for granted. Absolutely. Um, Tom, thank you. That's been thoroughly enjoyable, um, and I'm sure the supporters will, will go away from this. Um, taking a lot of stuff that they can bring into their own lives, their own businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been so interesting as well to see how football and uh, being a chef and running a restaurant, a hospitality mm. business has so many similarities as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks.